Hi, my name is Gaurav Galut and I welcome you to this video from quickdevnotes.com. In my previous video, we had a look at how tightly coupled applications use testability, why they are not extensible and how they break principles. For instance, a commerce app was breaking the single responsibility principle. You must be thinking how we had a look at it. The commerce class was so tightly coupled with its dependencies that it had to take the responsibility of instantiating them. And therefore, the commerce class was not only doing its process that it was supposed to do, it was also taking the responsibility of instantiating and handling or I would say managing the lifetime of the components that it is dependent upon. In this particular video, we will hand over this responsibility to some other component and that other component is known as the dependency injection container. I'll be using Autofac as my dependency injection container. Well, there are others available in the market, no doubt. But it's just a personal preference. You may use any other dependency injection container. For example, Unity from Microsoft. You can use Ninjact. You can use Castle Windsor and many more. In fact, you can build your own container. Okay, so let's get started right into the code without wasting any further time. Okay, so here we are back in Visual Studio. Now, as can be seen, the Commerce Manager, unlike the previous video, now exposes its dependencies explicitly. It is the right time, I think, to tell you that there are two ways in which a component can expose dependencies it carries with itself. These two are implicit dependencies and explicit dependencies. In this Commerce Manager, we are using explicit dependencies. I actually have written a complete post on, on my blog speaking about implicit versus explicit dependencies. So I would highly recommend that you just visit and have a look at the explanation. I will definitely put a link in the description. So no worries about it. Compared to the previous code, what I've done here is that I've uh, abstracted all the components to their respective interfaces and exposed uh, through the commerce managers as the dependencies. So let's have a look at the client application which is using this commerce manager component which is our program class. Now as you can see the, we are creating an instance app of commerce manager and we are newing up all the components here. So somehow we have moved the responsibility from uh, our commerce manager and handed it over to the program. But don't you think it's still tightly coupled to the program class? So what we're going to do next is that we're going to refactor, remove all this code and replace it by dependency injection container and make it very, very simple. Let's do that. But before going ahead, let's have a look if our application is actually working or not. Yes, it is completely working fine. Now what we need to do is add a container, the artifact, to our client because this is the one which is using our commerce app so there you go you will find artifact and you can install it directly the next thing that we need to do is configure our containers with the dependencies that we need to be resolved somewhere in our application now I'm a big fan of uh, you know separation of concern so what I'm gonna do is add a new class which I will call as container builder. Oops. I would say it IOC builder. And this class is going to hold the code which will configure the container and uh, let it know about the dependencies we require all throughout application. So let's do it. Okay, now we have educated our container about all the dependencies. So what we are actually saying here is that Okay, con Mr. Container, if you encounter a dependency on iPayment processor in our application, just provide an implementation object of a credit card processor. It will be a real object and, uh, and do the same for others. Now, you might be having a confusion here that why we have registered the Commerce Manager. And even if we have done so, uh, why we don't have something like dot as something something? And well, there's a reason to it. Uh, Autofact offers you a couple of ways in which you can register your dependencies. This one, this one in particular, implicit registration, which is as self, uh, it's going to instantiate a commerce manager and will return an object. We will talk about the different types of registrations in a completely separate video and I will show you how you can register your dependencies in multiple ways. Okay, let's go ahead and use this container which we have just beautifully decorated with 
everything let's remove the unused usings okay now that our container is clean let's use it we don't need this much of code anymore okay let's instantiate our ioc builder now what this is going to return is an uh, instance of container which is somehow like uh, if i do an explicit casting it would be something like so now we have our container in place and uh, what we can do is we can ask the container for uh, our app which is the commerce manager so we will say something like hey container please resolve the commerce manager and that's it yes that's that's it that's all i have to do okay let's go ahead and run our application let's see if it actually working even now okay so our application is running as it is there is no change in our application and we have reduced a large amount of code yes we have written some of it but i think it does make sense completely because now our application is extensible we can unit test this i'm i'm definitely going to do uh, another video which in which we'll have a look how separating out the dependencies into a container is helping us to achieve testability and extensions so what we have seen so far is the problems associated with a tightly coupled application we have seen how we can use a dependency injection container to uh, handle the instantiation of dependency components for any component that is dependent upon them so that's all for now i hope you like the video develop loosely coupled applications if you like the video give it a thumbs up and if you don't you leave a comment before hitting uh, down and if you like my videos and if you would like to read what i write you can always visit my blog uh, for which i will put the link in the description and uh, do subscribe if you don't want to miss any more videos any anyway, going ahead so yeah that's it thank you very much thanks for your time